Today we're taking a look at the new Timex chronograph that just was recently announced. This is a three time zone watch, so you have a local time, you get a GMT hand, and then of course you're getting a rotating bezel as well. This is a little bit different from the chronograph that was released last year. Uh, I think a lot of people will think that this is not as good looking as that chronograph, and I probably would agree. The bracelet is also different on this watch, so it's entirely different for AQ Timex and I think it misses the mark just a little bit. However, let's flip the camera and take a look hands-on at the new Q Timex 3 Time Zone chronograph. So here it is. This is the Q Timex. It is a 3 Time Zone GMT, their newest addition to the Q Timex family. It does not take the place of the other Q Timex GMT that they came out with. I think it was last year. This does not replace that chronograph. It's an addition to their lineup. So they have made so many different versions of the Q Timex, it's pretty crazy. I did a news video when this came out and I was very excited about it because I really loved the bracelet. Now, when I got it, I was excited about the bracelet and then a little bit disappointed. And we'll get to reasons why in just a few minutes. The functionality on here actually surprised me and then also slightly disappointed me. We'll get back to that also in just a few minutes. But I will tell you, this is a GMT that actually has a jumping hour hand. Very interesting that they did this. And I think that this is a Chinese movement. I'm actually 100% sure that it's a Chinese movement. They don't put any information about the movement in this watch. It's set up like a 7750. It is a quartz movement, obviously, but it looks like a 7750. So you have the registers on the left side of the dial. That's kind of how a 7750 looks. You have the Q right there that is applied and it says Timex and then it says chronograph right below that. You do have a lot going on on this dial. You have a minute track on a chapter ring. That chapter ring is black and is applied on top of the dial. And then you have applied indices. You have three sub registers. You have a 24 hour track up here. Then you have running seconds at the six o'clock or just above the six o'clock position. And then of course a 60 minute counter at the nine o'clock position. You have the Mercedes style hands. However, they are Timex style hands. I would call them Timex style hands because you have that T rather than a Mercedes emblem. Uh, you have a fence post minute hand, and then you have a red GMT hand with loom in there. So there is loom on this dial. We will do a loom shot towards the end. A lollipop second hand with a lollipop counterbalance. You have a bi-directional friction fitted 12 hour bezel with a loomed pip. And that is where the third time zone comes into play. So you have a local time, a traveler time, and then you have an extra travel time in the bezel with this 12 hour bezel in conjunction with the 24 hour indicator at the nine o'clock position or at the 12 o'clock position, excuse me. Size on this watch is actually pretty good. It's pretty in line with most of the larger Q Timexes that you've become used to the automatics and things like that. So it's around 40 millimeters. It's basically 40 millimeters at the case. You do get a mineral crystal on here. That mineral crystal has a beveled edge, which looks actually really good. At this price, I still would like to have a sapphire crystal. I'm not sure why they can't do that. They do it with other watches in their lineup. 11.5 millimeters thick. Crown on here is just about 5.4 millimeters, but there is some rubber on the crown and I don't really understand why they did that. I actually don't like it. And it's signed with the Q for Q Timex. Obviously the bracelet folds straight down because of the nature of this bracelet. It has straight end links, so it will fold straight down in a really tight lug to lug of 46 millimeters, which is excellent. The bezel action on here is a little bit loose. It will move if you rub it against something, but it's not terrible. I've seen worse on uh, more expensive watches, so I think this is actually pretty good. This is a metal insert that's been painted. I don't know what this metal is. Again, they don't give that information. Usually it's 
aluminum if they don't give information. However, uh, I'm not 100% sure. The case is brushed on the lugs. Well, really, they're hooded lugs. And then you have polishing on the sides and a little bit of polish on the top. The bezel itself is also all polished. The pushers are polished as well. You have the battery hatch, the classic battery hatch for Q-Timex on the back, which makes it obviously very easy to change uh, your battery. The bracelet is actually really nice. It sort of looks like what you get from a Tissot PRX. You get polishing on the inside of each one of the links. It actually feels really nice and is smooth. Uh, you do have obviously friction pins. However, there was one thing that I don't like about the bracelet and I was a little bit disappointed, but I guess at this price it's $239. It kind of makes sense. The finishing on the bracelet, the brushing on the top of the bracelet isn't as nice as the case. Now the case doesn't have phenomenal finishing on it and for a $239 watch, I wouldn't expect to have that great of finishing. But when you consider that for $375, you can get a PRX that is in quartz. That bracelet is finished as nice as the uh, automatic version, the Powermatic 80. And this has a really sort of rough finish to the uh, brushing. I'll do close-ups of it. It could be just my eye, but I, I don't know. It just doesn't look as nice. It feels really nice, a little bit off from the rest of the case finishing. That's really it. That's, that's my biggest problem. This is a true GMT, as people refer to it as a true GMT or a traveler's GMT, whatever you want to call it, a flyer GMT. So that means when you pull the crown out, obviously, it hacks, which is great. Put it into the second position, and it obviously starts uh, starts up again. And then the hour hand moves in one hour increments. It jumps in one hour increments, and it takes a lot. And I'm not sure why they didn't do half hour increments on here. So it's a few spins, and it will go a full hour. So you're not going to be able to change half hour time zones, but then you could time that with the bezel as well. But uh, the functionality isn't bad, but it just feels like I am spinning a spoon in a bowl of cereal is the only way that I could explain this. It's like I'm, you know, stirring some tea. It, it really doesn't have any positive feedback to it. It doesn't feel really good. And that goes for changing the time as well. It's pretty loose. There are two more things that I do want to mention about this watch. One is on the aesthetic and the other is the functionality. The functionality on the chronograph is also terrible. So when you push the top pusher, there is a vague feeling that you have pushed a button, but there is no feedback whatsoever. I can't explain it. It's not good. Uh, so then when you go to reset it, it's a little bit better on the reset, but the uh, start button is pretty terrible. And the other thing, the aesthetic thing here, is that date window. The date window is very awkwardly placed between the 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock. However, it's not centered. It's actually closer to the 5 o'clock. So if you have OCD like I do, when it comes to these things, this is going to bother you. This bothers me. It looks terrible. I think that the date window on this is horrible. It is way too close to the five o'clock. Um, and once you notice it, you kind of can't unnotice it. And then you also have that register that's really close by it. It's just a weird intersection of bad design, in my opinion. Anyway, besides that, I think it's a pretty good looking watch, a little bit busy on the dial, as I mentioned. Lots of hands, sub dials. I mean, it is a chronograph with a GMT function, so obviously it's going to look busy. So very quickly, let me show you the watch that I have on my wrist, and then we will do a quick loom shot. I wore this watch specifically because uh, it sort of reminds me of a Q Timex at the same time as a Submariner and a Mito Ocean Star. This is my newest addition to my collection is a Bulova. This is an oceanographer. Some people refer to this as the Bulova Submariner with obvious reasons, but the bracelet on here is phenomenal. It really is. And I have to say, even the finishing on this bracelet for a watch from 1979 is excellent when compared 
to this Timex. The brushing is just nicer. It's crazy, but there you go. Uh, it's it's just a cheap bracelet too. It's nothing you know crazy at all, but um, unfortunate for Timex, I think. Here is the Timex on my seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see, I mean, it doesn't look bad on at all. It wears really nicely. It is a 40 millimeter watch with like an 11 and a half millimeter thickness. Uh, it is a quartz chronograph. I think it only gets 50 meters of water resistance, which kind of makes sense. I really don't like this rubber clad crown. I have no idea why they did that. I think it would look better without it, in my opinion. Um, but unfortunately, that's the route that they went. $239, if you sign up with an email, you can get this for around $200, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so they give you 15% off if you sign up with an email. Anyway, guys, really quick loom shot. Well, there's a loom. It's not terrible. It's not incredible. Obviously, the chronograph second has loom on it, and that bezel pip has some loom in it. The applied indices aren't very liberally applied. I would say the hour hand has more loom than the uh, minute hand, and then you even have a little bit of loom in that GMT hand. Those are probably the brightest, the hands and the pip. And then of course the applied indices are fading pretty quickly. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. $239, really not a terrible price considering all the functionality that you're getting here. It is a flyer GMT, a true GMT, whatever you wanna call it. That's actually really cool. It does jump in one hour intervals, which is a little silly. They should have done half hour intervals. Either way, this is really nice, uh, especially considering that you can get it for around $200. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of Timex? This should have a sapphire crystal, probably my other biggest complaint. Uh, obviously, Timex not listening about that. And you can see the loom pretty much faded. It's garbage. Um, not good loom on here. Uh, very, very quickly faded. And now you can just see basically the hour hand, which makes no sense. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in the next video.